Hello and welcome to Rogue Artisans and Crafters, winner of the 2018 Southern Oregon Television Awards for Best Arts and Culture Show. I'm your host, David Glamour Dave Nienow. We welcome you, our viewer, to our show where we feature local artists and craftspeople here in Southern Oregon and we talk to our featured artists about how they came to their art, what drives them as artists, find out stories behind their art, their art process, and how their work as artists influences their lives. Today we feature local artist Susie Lee. I met Susie through Art de Jure Gallery in Medford. I have featured other artists from Art de Jure Gallery on the show, and I always make it a point to visit as many of the gallery events as my schedule permits, and I've talked to Susie numerous times and appreciated the quality and variety of the artwork that she creates. And so today we will talk to Susie Lee about her life as an artist and the work that she pursues today with her art. And so we welcome Susie to the show. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. So, uh, now you do quite a bit. Uh, uh, you, do, you actually have a variety. You've, you've been exploring oil painting recently, right? Indeed. I'm, uh, I've just begun in the last year and a half to do oil painting uh, with uh, a wonderful teacher, Penny Simmons. Yeah. And uh, the result are, are, at least that I have here, yeah. are these four paintings yeah. here, one of which is not even dry yet. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, no, it's a really, uh, uh, you know, you have a really wonderful, uh, you know, style to your work in general, and uh, and your oil uh, work is, is uh, has that uh, Simmons influence. It does, indeed. Yeah, and, uh, and you also do, like, watercolors and uh, drawings. I know you do drawings really well. We have some examples of that to, to, to talk about. Well, I started with just graphite, right. number two pencil, sc yeah. school pencil, and graduated to charcoal, which was uh, my professional medium for mm -hmm. years and years and years. And uh, I have wanted to do watercolor for uh, decades, yeah. but, uh, it, and I took, uh, 20 years ago when I moved here, I took watercolor from uh, Dodie Hamilton, uh -huh, right. uh, a beloved uh, yeah. watercolorist uh, from the Rogue Valley, mm -hmm. who is still a yeah. dear friend of mine. And uh, anyway, uh, I just cannot really master uh, watercolor, so I combine it with pen and ink. Right, okay. Yeah. And, uh, and then, uh, and then, um, you do also some model making. We have an example here, and we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Right. Um, so uh, if the control room could bring up uh, the first set of images, we'll kind of talk about some of your uh, uh, work. Um, okay. Ah, there's an example of my ch uh, one of my better charcoal pieces uh, that I displayed at Art de Jour Gallery. Mm -hmm. And uh, what it is, is a, uh, I can't just imagine out of my head a guitar and hands. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, that is a combination of uh, six different resource photos. Right. And uh, I more or less made up the front of yeah. the guitar, mm -hmm. but it's an electric guitar with yeah. two different people's hands. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, all right, let's go on to the next. There, yeah. I, again, my resource photos were from, uh, I have many owl books because mm -hmm. I love owls, and that is uh, a combination of six different owl yeah. pictures. Okay, yeah. And I made up the tree. And the, yeah. You know. All right, let's go on to the next. Oh, and I love that, this one, yeah. That, if, if your, your uh, viewers know wildlife images in, yeah. uh, outside of Merlin, mm -hmm. this is Defiance. Oh, okay. The, the eagle that Dave Simmons, uh, Sin Siddons holds on his, yeah. his uh, great uh, leather cuff. Right. And uh, we were invited out, uh, we artists were invited out to take photographs uh, on, on a day when they were closed. Mm -hmm. And uh, I painted... I mean, I did a charcoal of defiance from uh, an artist's yeah. photograph, yeah, okay. original photograph. Now let's go on to the next. Oh, that was one of my first, I did that in 2009, just before I joined Art Du Jour Gallery. Mm -hmm. It's one of the charcoals that uh, qualified me for well, membership okay. in yeah. uh, right. their artist cooperative. Yeah. All right, let's go on to the next. And that, uh, <laughs> That is a cougar who held still for me for three months yeah, while okay. I drew him. <laughs> Actually, 
a photographer named Denver Bryan uh -huh. grant, gr granted me the uh, rights, I paid him uh -huh. uh, an artist's fee, a uh, finder's fee, uh -huh. uh, for the right to draw from his tiny little photo uh -huh. that I found in, uh, an, uh, what is it, a Field and Stream oh, magazine. Uh -huh. yeah. And uh, so that's, that is a large drawing about that large yeah. from from a tiny <laughs> postage stamp yeah, right. size. Well, it's a really nice rendering, that's for sure. Uh, let's go on to the next. And horses, I love horses. Yeah. I've been drawing horses since uh, we lived on a ranch. We moved there when I was 11 years old mm -hmm. and uh, I've been drawing horses. Yeah, yeah. For well, ever. women and horses, you know, they go, that, that, together. They go yes. together, it seems <laughs> like, yeah. All right, let's go on to the next. And that really is supposed to be a, a self-portrait yeah. from when I was a young girl yeah. and I've always been a lover of cats. Yeah. And uh, so that's uh, that's just a, a number ten. I mean, a number two uh, school pencil yeah. drawing, graphite drawing yeah. of yeah. myself. Yeah. All right. Let's go on to the next. Now there is is a watercolor a combination watercolor pen and ink. Uh huh. Okay. And uh, what I did was drew uh, to draw that, and then put watercolor washes on and then go over, once that dried, go over it with pen and ink to get the detail. Yeah, right, okay. All right, let's go Oh, on. I might say though, well, you notice in that last mm -hmm. one and in this one, yeah. there are cats. Yes. And almost everything I paint or draw, I okay. sneak a cat in okay. there somewhere. That is a, uh, fr I drew, uh, drew that and painted from a, a photograph I took in uh, Santa Fe, New Mexico, just off of Canyon, Draw all all of the uh -huh. uh, great art galleries in yeah. Santa Fe, and that's a real house. Yeah. And uh, that's one of my favorite, one of my more successful watercolors. Yeah, well, it's a wonderful piece. So uh, let's go on to the next. If there's yeah. Oh, I sent you that too. Yeah, yeah, you did. That is is a watercolor. That's a straight watercolor from oh the 1980s. Yeah. I did that for uh, a woman who wanted it in her hospital uh -huh. room to look at something happy. Yeah, well, right. Yeah. Yeah. In okay. her final days. Uh, I believe there is, is there another thing? Yeah, there we oh, go. Oh, here we go with my oils. Yeah. That, uh, that particular oil painting is not here. Right. Uh, that was my very first oil painting a year and a half ago. And I want to give a shout out to my wonderful uh, and extremely talented uh, oil painting teacher Penny Simmons who uh, yeah uh, it's uh, uh, Penny's actually uh, one of the first artists I discovered after I was starting to create this show mm. and was just really blown away by the quality of her oil you painting betcha. work she is a self-taught uh, oil painter she spent two years away from the gallery teaching herself uh, the techniques and, and style of the old masters mm -hmm. yeah. and particularly uh, their, their, how they use their brushes, mm -hmm. what kind of medium they used. And uh, just, I admire her so much for the, the work she did completely on her own. Yeah. And she, going to the galleries to, you know, all over the, anyway, yeah. uh, to, to study the old masters. Mm -hmm. And she now is, uh, she does absolutely gorgeous work. Yeah, she does she know. does really incredible stuff. As, she sure you know. does. And I'm very privileged to be one of her two students. And yeah, by well, the way, it, these are private lessons. Yeah, it's just yeah, the three of us yeah. and uh, she does not give lessons. Yeah. Well, that's pretty good. I mean, you know, you're learning from someone that's really incredible on her, you, on their own. So You betcha. Yeah. Uh, and you know, and and what you're doing uh, now in oils is really a nice thing to see. And uh, you know, I never thought I could do something like this. Yeah, uh, and that is all due to uh, Penny's great ability to convey her uh, skills yeah. to other people. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think that's an important thing that that she's doing, and that's a nice thing to oh, see you done. Bet. You yeah. betcha. Now you've been doing. Now, how long have you been doing your art? I mean, you've been doing it for quite a while. Well, like most artists I began as a child you know when when I can pick up a 
as early as I, I could pick up a pencil and mm -hmm. a piece of paper, I drew horses and whatever else, and people liked my stuff, and yeah. the kids in the second grade used to pay me a nickel a piece for <laughs> horse heads <Okay. laughs> on the uh, art, you know, yeah. just on white paper. Yeah. And then uh, I really didn't take any formal lessons. I did take an art class uh, in college, but it was yeah. not something that I, uh, you know, drew a lot of mm -hmm help from. Yeah. I'll put it that way. In yeah. fact, it was quite depressing and I quit doing art for a while. Then, uh, when I got out of college, uh, 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 my business partner and I started a, an advertising business and I became the writer, not oh, okay. the artist. Yeah. So for, uh, for well, it, we're still doing it. And we've been in business for 38 years, yeah. Strode and Lee Marketing Specialists, and she did all the art. And then when I moved up here, even though I was still doing the copywriting for my business, mm -hmm. I began uh, to draw again. And then I found Art Du Jour Gallery. I just found it one yeah. day and I walked in and showed them, showed them the, uh, the cougar and mm -hmm. the, and the, the uh, bighorn ram. Right, yeah. And they invited me to join the gallery. It's yeah. an artist cooperative, yeah. as you know. Mm -hmm. And from there, boom, you know, most of what you see, uh, especially the color work, yeah. is, has all happened since, since I joined the gallery. Yeah, so a lot of this is like fairly recent yes. uh, stuff. Yes, yeah. uh, almost all the color. Yeah. The only, the only thing that's from the 80s is that uh, bluebird. Right, yeah. And that's yeah. it. So, yes, uh, I've only been oil painting for a year and a half with yeah. Penny, but uh, my, one of my loves is charcoal. Yeah. That is such a forgiving medium, and you can do so much drama with mm -hmm. it. Uh, yeah. The guitar, yeah, uh, right. hands, for instance. Yeah. I enjoyed doing that so much. Yeah, well, as someone who, um, uh, who hacks at the guitar, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate it. that was one of the first pieces that really caught my attention. Oh, really? Yeah, and so I think that's a kind of uh, a cool piece. And well, yeah. thank you, Dave. Yeah, um, and uh, now <clears throat> in terms of uh, uh, you now, like doing like your charcoal drawings. I mean, are mm -hmm. you? Um, I know that some artists really kind of have like a super wide variety of pencils that they're dealing with. Uh, to get different layers and techniques and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, are you, you know, are you, do you, uh, uh, are you using to, to like a certain limited palette of what you're trying to, to in terms of the tools that you're using for the charcoals? Yeah, for the charcoals. Okay, I use um, a, a limited uh, palette. Yeah. Uh, if uh, I use vine charcoal, which is just sticks that have been cooked, you oh. know, into charcoal. Okay. And then uh, for the really dark uh, background colors, for instance, I use a, uh, a, a block of, uh, oh darn it, now it's uh, the actual name of the block of dark charcoal is, it's compacted or yeah. something like that. Yeah. But then for the fine detail, I use uh, charcoal pencils yeah, with okay. a sharp point. Yeah, okay. And uh, to blend, that's, that's the secret too. Mm -hmm. I use what's called a stump. It's a uh, uh, made of uh, wrapped um, paper. Okay. And it has a point on it. Uh -huh. And uh, you use it to blend and to move the charcoal around on the page. Oh, okay. All right. And um, now like when you, uh, go into doing like your a piece that's a one of your color pieces and you're doing both a combination of of uh of watercolor and, and, pen, and, and, ink. and pen and ink mm -hmm. so um uh what uh what pens and inks are you using to uh in in that creation process uh, well i use a uh you know a water uh, insoluble uh Pan, uh, just a, I have a variety of uh, mic micron pens yeah, okay. and uh, a variety of tips right. and depending on uh, how fine I want to go with the detail after the watercolor washes have dried, mm -hmm. 
then uh, I'll choose from my, my set of, of right. micron pens. Okay. And um, uh, in terms of the, your uh, creation process, what, how do you go about finding your ideas of what you're going mm. to choose to do a piece on? You know, I don't go searching for ideas. They're either a burning passion yeah. in already inside me. Oh, I really want to draw uh, some of the animals from wildlife images. I, I go out there a lot because I'm a member. Right, okay. And uh, I have wanted for a long time to draw Rufus the bobcat. Yeah. And uh, I did Defiance. Uh -huh. And uh, then Nikki, the uh, Eurasian lynx. Uh -huh. I've. Uh, started a, a watercolor pen and ink of, of Nikki. Yeah, okay. And, uh, and as far as the ones I've been doing with Penny, we three uh, decide, we confer, and we yeah. decide what we're going to do next. And it's usually, for Penny, it's based on what she wants to teach us next. Okay. And with this one, it was a uh, palette knife. Oh, okay. All of the water in that uh, is, is done with palette knife strictly. Right, yes. And that's where I learned how to use palette knife. I had yeah. never in my yeah, life. Yeah, I, I know that there are certain artists that I've seen uh, who do all their, their, the whole paintings that they do are strictly in a palette knife kind sure. of technique. You bet. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and it's really kind of amazing the kind of the effects that can be achieved just as that one tool as a, as a painting tool. You're right, Dave. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, so it's, but that's a beautiful uh, image. I just, that's just gorgeous looking. I, thank you. Yeah. Uh, that one has a cat in it too. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, all right. Okay. That's, that's yeah. why it's called On the Catwalk. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, now one of the things that, uh, that we're going to talk about next is your model making. Yes. Yeah. And um, uh, so how did you get into Oh, doing this all my life I have loved wood and when I was just a little kid I used to uh, well we we made our own toys when mm -hmm. I was a kid you know we didn't have a lot of money so mm -hmm. when we lived in Lone Pine I'd collect scraps of pine and other kinds of wood from around town Lone Pine mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, I made little my dad let me have uh, an X-Acto knife or, yeah, you know, okay, whatever yeah. the sharp knives were back in the 40s, yeah. which is when I'm talking about. And I, I made whole towns oh, out no. of scrap wood and yeah, right. uh, carved little uh, oh, hitching posts uh -huh. for the plastic horses and the bow-legged yeah. cowboys. And uh, since then, of course, well, as a, uh, a pre-teen, I bought kits to make model airplanes. Uh -huh. Boys usually do yeah. that, but I loved the feel of balsa wood. Yeah. And I loved sanding that wood and making it smooth. Yeah. And I got very tired of using kit models, so yeah. I began to design my own right, things. Okay. Yeah. And uh, uh, I, Dad bought me balsa wood strips just uh -huh. so that I could make what I wanted to. Yeah. And, a, and a set of X-Acto knives. Mm -hmm. So I began to make whatever my heart desired. Yeah, okay. and, uh, well, we happen to have some uh, uh, a gallery of some of your images of some of your model making work. And so if the, if the uh, control room can bring those up and mm -hmm. uh, we can talk about uh, some of these uh, models that, uh, that we're uh, taking a look at. Well, this is the second uh, church model that I designed and made. Mm -hmm. The first one I did f uh, in 1966 for a young man who had cerebral palsy and couldn't get out of his mm. his uh, chair or uh, house to mm. go to church so I made him a church yeah. and uh, it was similar to this but nowhere near uh, with the detail mm -hmm. and uh, so on All right. so let's go on to the next image in the sequence yeah there it is with the light inside yeah. uh, that this one I made uh, Oh goodness, must be six years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, it belongs to Talent United Methodist Church okay. now, and that's where it sits and yeah. it's displayed and lit every Sunday All for right. the service. All right, so let's go continue on to the next image and and uh, there's a sequence here around. Now so that shows the interior, what that interior looks like. Um, 
Uh, I made the little pews and yeah. I bought the people who were all railroad uh, yeah, right. plastic yeah, people from yeah. from Al's hobbies in uh, in Medford, and then I cut them apart to make. Yeah. The the uh, the pastor w I cut off his train hat and took the lantern out of his yeah, hand, right, okay. painted his head his hair back on black, yeah. and the same with with the others I yeah. altered them. Yeah right okay let's go on to the next. Oh that little piano I yeah. loved making that little piano. Yeah it's just in a, there. That's an amazing thing. And it has a, a it has a little hymnal open on oh, it, wow. it, made out of paper and oh, cardboard, and I okay. glued it on. Let's go on to the next. Hmm. I don't think oh, you yeah, heard yeah. it. Okay, there we go. Oh, that's just that. Uh, give, I, those are some of the actual windows in Talent United Methodist oh, Church. Oh, okay. The so flame, you created those, yeah. Yeah, the flame there is the Methodist. Uh, Okay. Emblem. All right. Let's go on to the next. And oh, and that's that's the roof which yeah. comes off. Right. Um, yeah. I probably right. probably yeah. aren't looking this way, but anyhow. Yeah. Okay. Let's go on to the next. Yeah. Oh, I forgot about this. Um, this is. The Medford Train Depot, right? Okay, which is now Porter's Restaurant, right? Yeah, and Porter's had a uh, contest several years back, uh, f calling all artists, and uh, uh, I was the only one who made a 3D model. Mm. Everybody else's art, uh, yeah, right. In the contest, yeah. uh, were paintings and drawings. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go on to the next. That's another oh. scene, another angle another. of it. Yeah, and on the board was the, uh, I typed out the uh, history, a right. brief history of the depot. Okay, all right, let's go on to the next. And that, I bought that engine. I didn't build the engine. All right, yeah, okay. From Al's again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Shout Al's out to Al's. Al's a good source for some unique stuff. So. I'll say. Yeah, so let's go on to the next. And so now we uh, talk about your piano. Now, okay. This is something special. This is my masterpiece. Yeah. This, I designed and built. It is not from a kit, mm -hmm. and it took me five years to finish wow. this. It was a love gift to my sister, oh, wow, and okay. it lives now in a in a display case in uh, in her home in yeah. Arizona. Yeah. But um, it is an actual piano. Uh, well, the piano keyboard is four inches long. Uh -huh. That gives you an idea of how big yeah. the model uh, or how small the model is. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I did to get that was I photographed uh, uh, Knight's Piano Store on right. Crater Lake. I hope they're still there. Yeah. Um, let me crawl around underneath their pianos and shoot yeah. pictures of the bottoms and uh, to shoot a, a picture of the keyboard, yeah. etc. And I uh, reproduced that through a lengthy process yeah. and shrank it down to four inches yeah. and glued the keys the photo of the keyboard on and then I took black lan plastic lanyard material and made all of the raised black keys and glued them on with it yeah. with it tweezers. Oh, wow okay so let's go on to the next image in the sequence because there's several here more the showing different uh, mm -hmm. angles on the on the piano. Now there are hinges on on that front flap uh, and on the uh, on the right hand side there as we look at it uh, it can, it closes up. Mm -hmm. I'll take the little stick out, and it closes up. Yeah. And uh, the the thing that holds the music the also uh, yeah. is on a hinge, and it it can fold down into the uh, into the. But that part was the most tedious yeah, and the imagine. most difficult part of all. Stringing yeah. the very fine gold wires between. Tiny gold pin heads, and yeah. and um, layered, mm -hmm. and that took uh, oh years. Wow! Uh, yeah. You know, I didn't do it day after yeah. day after day. I I had to take weeks and months off because it was tedious. Yeah. There it is, all closed up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's 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 just a beautiful model. It's just a. Uh, 
Man, I'm just impressed with the, with all the sheer detail, and, and all I can say is you got more patience than I do. <laughs> that's what everyone says, yeah, and that's the bottom. And I, I shout out to Mr. Knight for letting me crawl around yeah. and take photographs underneath his, you know, full size grand pianos. Yeah. And uh, my sister was blown away, needless to yeah, say, when I gave yeah, it to her. Yeah. But that is my masterpiece. I'll never duplicate that. And for those of you watching, because I've been asked before. Well, you know, could we buy one of those? Yeah. Could we commission you to yeah. do one of those for me? Abs yeah. Absolutely not. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> no way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So now, uh, to kind of wrap up, what's like the general price range on your art, and how does someone get hold of you to be able to uh, to purchase your art? Okay. Well, the uh, the smaller pieces, the charcoals and the pen and inks and whatnot, are uh, between 150 and 400, okay. depending on the size. Um, I had this on display during the uh, a couple months ago uh, during the Medford uh, studio tour. Yeah, right. And I had an $800 price tag on that, and uh, a man, a good friend of mine, came up, an artist, yeah. came up to me and said, "You should put a one in yeah. front of that eight. Yeah. And, and because I really don't know. Yeah. But I, I'm going to take what he said seriously. Yeah. yeah. Well, Susie, I appreciate you coming on to the show, and thank you very much for coming in and kind of helping me in a pinch situation when I, uh, when I, when I needed some help, so I thank you very much. Well, I thank you, Dave, for the opportunity to be here with you. Well, I'm glad to have you on. You're a wonderful artist, and I'm glad to be able to give you a showcase. Thank so. you very much, All right. Dave. So we've reached the end of our show, Rogue Artisans and Crafters. We thank you at home for joining us and learning about our featured artist, Susie Lee. Wish to thank Susie Lee for agreeing to come onto the show to discuss her life as an artist. And so I am your host, David Glamour Dave Ninau, and we will see you next time. <laughs> and they do breaking glass. Now, <laughs>